Hello, welcome to another Pro Modeler build. Um, a bit of a special one this time. We're going to be doing uh, F16s, both Tamiya kits. Um, one we're going to do as a Thunderbird, as it comes in the boxing right here. The other one we're going to do as in uh, basically the Wild Weasel format um, with the F16 here. Now, um, a lot's been said about the kits. Yes, they are very, very nice. They are as good as everyone says. I've built quite a few of them now, and I do like them. No real major issues with it. Only really is the air intake the way to get that seamless, which we've covered in other video builds, but certainly I'll go through it with you again um, and there is a little flaw on the canopy which a lot of people moan about which really is nothing um, okay differences between the kit um, this one here with the f16 if we talk through first this is what we call the block 3252 um, and then obviously the one back here is what we call the block 50 the difference between these blocks that we're talking about really is quite a small difference is in the size of the actual air intake at the front um, it's what we call a midlife upgrade they sort of had a common bay they have a different engine and a different air intake the block 52s if it ends in a 2 32 or 52 have the smaller mouth the big ones the block 50s have more what we call the big mouth F16s. That is your major difference. Okay, there's lots of other little differences, but they're the big ones you're looking at from the modeling point of view. The kits themselves, if we have a quick open up of the boxes, I'll drop the lids back there, and we can do a side by side comparison. First thing you notice, the F16 boxing, everything is in white. Very good reason for that, it just helps your painting. The aircraft's gonna be white, it saves you having to go around and do it. Obviously, you're not gonna be doing masses of pre-shading and bits and pieces like that, so certainly that's the reason for that. Side by side comparison, you've got exactly the same sprue there, which covers the actual fuselage top halves, and then um, obviously the underside bits as well. Next up, we've got here exactly the same brute sprues in the bag um, for the actual there. Uh, at some point, we're hoping they're gonna bring out the B version, that's why the canopy is done. Uh, the front half of the cockpit on the top half is different. We're still all eagerly awaiting that one, unless you're watching this in years to come and perhaps have already done it. Um, next up, we've got a side-by-side -side comparison again. Uh, we've got here, which is the main undercarriage. This here over here is what we call the Block 52 undercarriage. It's the only other difference. Um, what happens is uh, there's different types of undercarriage. You've got what's known as the lightweight undercarriage and the heavyweight. Difference basically, wheels are not at the back and the doors are a little bit bulged to get in the bigger wheels, things like that. Um, obviously, you get both types, which is quite nice with the actual the Thunderbirds kit. Um, you get the light and the heavyweight. So, okay, that's just the same. Working our way down, we've got fuel tanks, you've got missiles, you've got all your little bits and pieces, you've got your ejector seat, which is quite a nice part, um, and all your other bits like that. Uh, exactly the same um, with the other one, so that's no difference whatsoever. The only thing you actually get slightly different, um, which is on the Wild Weasel setup, which has got the, the Seeker for um, anti-radiation missiles, um, and the actual the missile, the Har missile itself. That's the only difference, you obviously get two of those, whereas you don't get them with the Thunderbird kit. Exactly the same, clear spruce. You get a choice of canopies, either tinted or clear, which is quite a nice touch, because obviously you use a tinted one for the front half and the clear one for the back. So that's those done, and obviously you get lights and various other bits and pieces on there. Um, you will notice also, if you have bought the uh, the version of the kit, the other version, which is the Air National Guard, it does come with laser-guided bombs and all the other bits and pieces. You get the seeker heads for those on the clear parts as well. The big difference. Okay, here is the big difference. Um, basically, you get an extra set of undercarriage um, with the Thunderbird set because it has the lightweight undercarriage. Basically, you get little um, lights on the undercarriage at the back. The doors are not bulged because it's a lighter undercarriage. A smaller wheels go up and in um, and that. So you do get the, the extra fret, which makes that the lighter one. Then basically, the big difference between the two um, it's those intakes we were talking about. Um, here we are, This the, the tan coloured one over here is for the Block 50. It's a bigger mouth, it's a bigger engine at the back as well with a Pratt & Whitney engine at the back. Um, and then obviously you've got the older type um, with the older type of engine and turkey feathering at the back here um, and the smaller mouth for the Thunderbird one. If you wanted to make um, obviously into a big mouth one, you're going to have to get hold of this sprue to put over to with a Thunderbird one to do that type of thing. Um, if not, then you're all okay because you've got all the parts here. But that is really your only difference between the two and obviously your decals. Um, just going through uh, the decals themselves, very nicely printed, fantastically in register. I won't get them all out now because we'll go through them. Um, as you'd imagine with the instructions, extremely detailed, calling out Tamiya paints all the way through. Um, which is quite handy, although they do go on to use their air can of spray. Um, here's the Thunderbird um, decals, nice big sheet done there, usual thing. Um, I haven't actually done this in 148, the Thunderbird one, 
but certainly I've done a few of the 132s, the big version, and really you can say it's almost like a scaled down version of the big one. They're very nice, they go together very Okay, so as normal, we're gonna start with the cockpit. Now, to be honest, there is aftermarket, Aries have certainly got another cockpit out, um, and there's a few others around, <coughs> which are very nice cockpits, but I have to say, in all honesty, I don't see the real point of actually putting in an aftermarket cockpit into this. Okay, the HUD area and the instrument panel covering is a little bit more detailed and perhaps behind the cockpit, but really, you know, the cockpit itself in here is lovely little detail comes up great with a little bit of wash as we'll do in a minute and all the rest of it so really I wouldn't worry too much unless you're really you know going to go to town on the F-16 the actual one that comes with the kit is a nice one one of the better ones now lots of ways you can paint this as separates from a speed point of view I always just pop this all together and then I go around and do all the other bits of painting at the end instead of doing it in the meantime so what we're going to do we're going to start by putting the old um, rudder pedals in which do tend to be a bit fiddly just to get in there so we just use some tweezers so the rudder pedal is in the little hole down the back there not that you'll probably be able to see them when it's done unfortunately but you'll know they're there that goes on and then obviously we're just gonna instrument panels they just go in and butt right up to the side okay and then we're gonna put the front one in whilst it's all still wet because they tend to push in a little bit once it's in there and you want them to line up just with the the inside if you like so there we go that's that one in and then you can just nudge the bottom one up to make a nice little join at the bottom there just like that same on the other side just coming down on there bottom one in I'll put this top one in Okay, so it says trying to get hold of it. There we go. Okay. There we go. Same thing again. Give them a little bit of a twist and a push just to line them all up so they all sit nice together. Just like that. Okay, then we can just put the back on. So if you just put a bit of glue around the back, the back section just clicks in and should push up to the back of your instrument panels you just put in. Pop a glue around there, just in there, just like that. Now, personal choice, um, if you want to put the actual control stick in there, I always do, purely because it saves having to try and paint the bottom of it, and then obviously the glue tends to leave a little glue mark in there. So we just sit that in, just like that, and get that one in there. And then we can come along, and we can put the outside for the throttle. Remember to pull it slightly back. You don't want it too far back. It doesn't travel too far backwards but it certainly just needs to be really just like that and there we go that's the cockpit actually done now so we can leave this to dry off and then we can get painting Okay, so as we've got that cockpit section dry, we can move on. Um, now, as I do a lot of my builds, as you see, sometimes you get the instructions and it says A, B, C, D, um, or numbers one through whatever are the stages of the build. That's great, but sometimes it's a lot easier to break it down, have a look at it your way. Um, for instance, the seats are gonna be painted the same color as the cockpit and various bits and pieces. So if, if you're doing the Tamiya one now, jump ahead to number, I think it's about 20, 21, something like that. Um, and there you can crack on with doing the seat. Now with this one, if we bring you in a little bit closer there we go we've got the back here the way i actually do it if you put a drop of extra thin down those grooves at the back like that and then put the seat edges in so if you pop one to, in one side and then one in the other just like that and then give it another drop of glue just on the inside just to let it run around all those areas like that and then you put the seat back in if you pinch that together slightly okay and then with the actual cushion area here which is the front which is all the seating if you drop that in but don't glue it and there's a good reason for this which i'll show you in a second if we can get it in a little too narrow part it, widen it apart there we go it sits in just like that so we've got the seat done and there it is like that now if we just got one done here already this one's already dried um, from the other one now the reason I haven't glued it in is because you can pull the cushion out and it's there because the cushion is going to be a different color 
to the actual seat because obviously it's going to have a black background a um, bit of color at the top and a cushion and um, with the harnesses on there and obviously the rest of the seat is going to be the interior cockpit color so it just makes it a lot easier because we can paint both as a separate bring it together in the end then glue it and then we go ahead now I haven't put the top part on but you can pop that part on now as well if you want because that's going to be the same color as the rest of it so that will sit on the top there just like that you can glue that and as I say and then just when we come to paint it which we'll be doing shortly we can do them then as separates right so once you've done those you can those are out of the way you can also whilst you're there um, it's part number 19 which is the instrument panel and the bits and pieces like that now the reason for doing the instrument panel now um, at the same time the cockpit is because the instrument panel is going to be the same color as the actual um, the cop the seat and the other bits as well so it's quite straightforward you've got the upfront controller which is two halves so they literally go together like that which are parts number a5 and a6 on Tamiya so they'll go in and then we just put a drop of glue in there like that hold that together just one second and we let that glue nice and tight and then obviously you've got a clear part here which is off your clear sprue um, which is number L11 that literally is going to sit down in the top now it paints basically all black apart from one little area so all that is if we bring you in nice and close you can see we're going to be in like that and then this one just slides in between oh, if we can get it in there slides in between facing down into the groove it's a clear part but it's all going to be painted black so we don't have to worry too much about it so we can just give it a drop of glue just in those areas to put that in like that and then what's going to happen then we've got the instrument panel which is cleaned up ready to go and we've got the shroud which will obviously be painted black and then what happens is this one isn't glued it was just all together you basically got the shroud sits on the top just like this and then obviously you've got your instrument panel it slides in so hopefully this will still slide out just comes out just like that so we can paint all these because these are going to be the same color same time as you can see here we've got the cockpit parts out for both of them um, clean them up just sand them off obviously the tabs at the front be very careful when you do this back one it's important to make sure you use a nice wide sanding stick and then sand it and then obviously you've got two little lips at each end don't sand them off because it is designed to sit somewhat like it so you don't want to be getting the heavy sanding because if you put a curve into that when we come to marry up the back half of the fuselage you want a nice join so hopefully if you've kept it nice and straight and crisp there won't be a gap in it but it's quite important because what we're going to do, we're going to do the insides of the cockpit here. It's going to be done the interior colour as well. So what we're going to do, we're going to get the airbrush all loaded up. We get some paper down here to protect the mat, and we can get spraying. Okay then. So we got all the bits all lined up that we're going to do for painting. Now, first thing you're going to notice is that um, Tammy actually calls out for XF20, which is basically a uh, light gold grey. Um, trouble is, um, I don't think it's right. Quite frankly, I use um, XF54, which is a dark sea grey, um, because that is basically the match for dark gold grey, um, which is tends to be the interior colour for all F16s. Now, if you haven't heard me, seen me mention it before, we've got here a fantastic book by Read Air uh, Publications, which basically does every single step-by-step -step photo you can imagine walk around of an F-16. So when you go along and you go past halfway through, you come to the cockpit and you look at it and it is the grey that we're after, which is basically um, XF-54, uh, which is a very good match for this thing and not XF-20 which is far too creamy colour and far too light. But if I haven't shown you this book before, it goes through lovely pictures of all the ejection seats, the canopies, right the way through, all the way through to weaponry at the end. So if you haven't, the links for it are on the site. Um, you can invest in a fantastic book. Um, they also do it on the A-10 and the F-15, and I'm sure over time they'll be bringing out other aircraft as well. So if you haven't got one and you want to have a good reference book, then look no further than Read Air Publications. You can also have a look for them on the net. I think it's www.readairpublications.com. Right, that's enough of the free advert. Okay, so let's move on. XF54, as we were just saying. Warm up the old compressor and get some air in there. So, usual thing. Putting a drop of thinners in first. Just a little bit, not much. A nice blob. 
of paint. This is probably only about 10% thinners. Um, I could spray it in neat, but I won't. I'm just give it a quick mix up with a cocktail stick. Okay, just like that. Airbrush is coming up. There we go. Just and all we're going to do is spray the insides. Just like so. If I bring you in just a little bit closer. Okay, and then we can do the same for the tubs. Just doing absolutely everywhere for the moment. There we go, just like that. And we're gonna paint all the other bits as we go. Okay, so the next step we can do is some brush painting. So there, it's got two brushes, one very, very thin, one quite sort of a medium. Um, so what we're gonna do, we'll paint the various parts. If we just get some black paint, if I just move things around so you can see a little bit better. I use a cap, just like that. Okay, and for this bit, we're just gonna do the seat cushion. So if we bring you in a little bit, and then that way we can see what we're up to. Okay, so literally we're just gonna do seat cushion. Paint's a little bit thin in there, so let's thicken that up a bit. Okay, we just bring you out a little bit. <clears throat> there we go. And then obviously make sure you do the edges. And the, around the tops of the cushions, right the way around. Also, I'm doing this a little bit quicker to show you. You can do the cushions um, various colours, but you've noticed they seem to have a, like a black sheepskin effect on the newer ones um, with the F16s. So that's why I've gone for that. And then all I do is fill in that there and then obviously what we can do is give it a bit of a wash around just for that bit there so there's that one done and then the same we're going to go around the tops of the actual um the, the ejector seat itself so we're just going to come in from the side there we go around the back part like that over the top then what we can do is we can pop back in a moment um, with some green paint and do the straps um, that actually put the the parachute in the top of the ejector seat there because they're sort of a, a greeny colour. So we just come through the front. Obviously, I'm doing this slightly back to front so you can see it. Just come right in the front like that. Obviously, make sure you do under the little sensors on the side and the front of it and there's the seat done there so obviously the two can marry up now and what we'll also do in a moment we'll pick out the little hosing that goes down the side of the seats and the oxygen bottle will be green um, and we'll go around and do that as well so there's that one done the actual up front display um, which holds the the heads up display if you like that is going to be totally painted black. Don't worry about that clear part. If you're using acrylics like we're doing here, we'll scrape it away so we can uh, see it a lot better. And we can put a, dob of, uh, a drop of clear paint in there. So we just do around those like that. It's all black. That can all be back to dry. Same with the, um, the instrument panel as well. What I'll do in a moment, you'll see some close-ups uh, once I've finished it all. And you can actually see for yourself where the, the different lines are. So we just make our way around these. And say so it's quite a quick job we're doing here. Normally you can take your time and pick out all the different areas which are black and which aren't.
So there we go, that's the interim panel done like that. So you can let all those dry. Okay, now here comes the interesting bit. The cockpits. Now some people will mask this and spray them all up. I've already done one here for comparison um, for doing the black panelling. Basically, the way I do it, use a nice thin brush, something like this, which is, um, ooh, what size is this? Uh, this is uh, 3.0, okay? Thin paint, and if I bring you in nice and close, you can try and see me do this. Okay, as I say, I'm doing it at an angle, so it thinks, but if you put in the thin paint, you can see it working itself around all the panel lines and to the edges, then all you do is push your paint towards those edges and then that way the capillary action will pull the black paint up to the edges but hopefully not too far over there you, well, you can see that and then that way you don't have to run the risk of overshooting quite as far as perhaps you might do with other ones and then what you can do, if you make a complete hash of it and you go too far or whatever reason, what you can actually do then is just pop around with some thin grey paint just around the edges and let the capillary action work its way around all the different bits and pieces as you go. Now we're going to do something quite clever with some weathering wash in a moment for the uh, demarcation lines. But I'll just carry on doing this one for a moment. Okay, so the next step, <clears throat> as you can see, we've got the black, it's all totally dry there. So I'm going to take some um, Pro Modeler's Light Wash, there's that one there, give it a good, good shake, good, good mix, because as I say, it does tend to um, separate um, a little bit on the bottom. The light wash, if you want to take off, um, just have like the white colour, um, literally let it separate slightly and you'll notice that the heavier colour um, drops down to the bottom area down here, you get dark patches and then obviously it gets lighter as it gets near the top. But for this we need it quite uh, quite nice and thick. So what we do, we've got on the brush just like that and all we're going to do is just wipe the light right the way over thing and just give it a bit of a work in, nice bit of a rub round all over the switches and down the panels just like that. Back onto the other side, same thing and just make sure you work it in. It's quite important because what you need it to do is to get into those recesses between the panels. Now you might need to give it two coats. When it dries, if it dries quite light and you can't really see the white between the panel lines and things like that, then it might be worth just going over it again and giving it another um, go with the white over the top. So there's that one. And then obviously just let that dry for a few moments well, for about sort of 20 minutes, half an hour, until it's really totally dry. And then, you should end up with something looking like this. Um, which is obviously then your, your panel. Now, if I bring you nice and tight for this, as you can see, it's on there like that. Then all you're going to do, come along, cotton wool bud, moisten it, okay, and just light little strokes all over. And what you're trying to do is obviously get the, the light wash out of the the actual off the surfaces and things like that and come in. So what you do, sometimes it's quite hard to get between the switches because the cotton bud can't really get in there. I'll open it up like this, you can see it a bit better. But you really just have to keep wiping at it. getting in there as best as you can. So if we go over to this side and just keep going over it and I hope you can see then what happens is obviously the same way as the wash works on panel lines is the same way it works here obviously you get the recesses um, are picking it up with the decubarcation lines obviously have the white bars in then so what I'll do is I'm gonna continue to get it off and I'll take some stills for you Okay, now that's done. All we're going to do is going to get some silver. You know, I'm using Citadel's here, silver. A bit of kitchen roll, just for some dry brushing, usual thing. Load it up, knock it all off, reload it again, because it'll help to moisturise the bristles a bit. Okay, get it all off, everything completely off. Okay, then all we're going to do, very, very lightly, 
is just going to brush over the switches just to bring them all up to life. And we'll just do a little bit of scuffing down on the floor for where the pedals are just to bring that cockpit area all to life and then what you can do, checking your references, is go around then and uh, pick out all the switches with the red bits and the covers and all the rest of it and do it like that. At the same time as we've got it out, what we do, we can just dry brush the actual panelling as well. Now we have got decals to go on here, so we're not going to go too mad on this. But as you can see, we bring you in nice and tight, it just brings those to life and gives them a little bit of show. Same as we do the seat edges as well, just a little bit. There we go, just to give it some bit of wear to the look of it. And on the other side, just on there, just like that. Okay, so these bits are all dry now. As you see, we've got the cockpit all done and is all weathered, just like that. And then we can get the seat together. So what I've done with a cocktail stick with a little bit of black paint on it, I've literally just gone along and just rubbed the top to do the top cable, put in the silver parts, painted the handles yellow, that type of thing. And because we'd painted the seat separately with the sides of the cushions and that, what should happen now is these two parts literally will just drop in together and push in and we'll hold just like that where you can just put a couple of drops of glue up the back um, and then let them run through and that'll take care of that so that's your seat actually done then the cockpit side um, obviously there is decals that go on for your screens but obviously I'm going to have this one powered down so you wouldn't see them so you could put a drop of green inside clear green just to give it that sort of um, turned off hue that they get or perhaps a little bit of clear or just leave it like that so what we're going to do we're just going to fit the up front controller and that quite easily normally slides through bit of a one-way trip this because it doesn't like coming back out once it's in um, but that's in there like that then obviously we've got the cover which is just painted flat black as well and this is this top of the instrument panel and there we go that all fits in just like that and then we can just come along fit it to the top of our cockpit and there we go it fits in just like that quite straightforward quite easy and then the seat um, what you've actually got is some decals which go on the sides both on the sides um, you've got a little ejection handle at the front and obviously you've got some straps and they're decals as well so if I show you one I've got done here already and what I'll do is I'll show you a still of it in a moment but basically there we go there's your completed uh, cockpit tub all done like that showing through it's got a little bit of weathering on it I um, don't know how we can pick it out there uh, just to show off um, the switches and the demarcation areas and things like that. But that's that bit done now.